Go for it. Okay. I've already gone into NOAA and selected the patient file, so you'll need to do that first. And then the first thing that comes up is, do you want to create a new file or add to it or cancel? And I'm just going to say, yes, create a new one based on this one. So once you're in the file, you got to go back to that test selector button, which is this one right here with the blue highlighted. This is the one, remember, that we switched back and forth between otoscopy and um, audiometry. It's also, if it works, there we go. So here you see the different tabs, video otoscopy, I would select there. The Otoflex is what we're gonna use today, but if we were doing OAEs, we would select there. And then our audiometry is where it's at right now. So I'm gonna select Otoflex. There's a specific protocol, and I didn't want to do that, um, for pediatrics, and then there's one for adults. Just has a little bit different settings, which is kind of nice. So this is the Otoflex. This is actually connected via Bluetooth, so we can take it off of the stand. You push power right here to turn it on. Once we have it on, you're not going to need to do that again in here. But if you were starting fresh, you would need to. So I'm going to wait just a second while it starts up. Another thing we need to do for the first time when we're using it every day is calibrate. This is a 2cc coupler, which means it's basically an artificial ear, if you will, that we're measuring just to make sure that the device is functioning okay. So I'm going to push this button here, the bottom one. It says probe check is highlighted. I'm going to push that button and then it'll do a reading. And then it says probe is okay, adjusted to 2cc. So now I know that it's all, the self-test is good. Now we're ready to start. This is on and ready to go. I hit control panel to make it start connecting. Then I click on create new session. You won't have to do all of these steps because this was just from the very beginning, but you will need to do create new session when you get into the file. You'll just have to remember to pull up your patient file, go into Otoflex, and then create a um, new patient file. So you place this on the shoulder of the test ear and then I usually leave this setting right here or you can hold it. Okay. You're, no, you don't have to hold it, oh, but okay. the person that's testing, you could hold it. These cords are out of whack real quick. So this is the side for contralateral acoustic reflexes. Remember when we talked about acoustic reflexes, you have your probe side. So when we do acoustic reflexes, this is the probe that's emitting the sound. Um, and it's also doing the measuring for the tympanometry. So this would be the ipsilateral response when we get to oops, when we get to acoustic reflexes. Then when we do contralateral, he will actually hear the tone over here, but then the probe is measuring the reflex on this side. Okay, so now you have to remember to select the appropriate size tip, and you want to make sure that it's a size that's just seals perfectly in the outer portion of the canal. You don't want to go deep in the ear. Don't use a small tip. Um, I have it set here already. You don't have to change it, but it says temp. It says T plus RT, and that just means tympanometry plus reflex thresholds. And you're going to see it's really automated, which is nice. I was telling you about when I was in school. It was all um, I'm dating myself here, but we had to go in and actually find threshold you'll see that this machine does it all for us, which is awesome. So I'm gonna pull up and back on the ear, place the tip in the ear, and you sort of put it in the ear and you give it just a little bit of a twist to seal it, and it should stay without holding it. And then I'm ready to go, so I push play. I say push play, it's the arrow that reminds me of the play button. And this is telling me that I have a good seal we have our tympanogram reading. It went really quick because it's now going into reflexes. So see how it's presenting a tone now at 80, no response. It went up to 85, no response. It's looking for about a 0.3 deflection here. So 
85.2 it was actually there at 85 so it counted at 90 now it's so it's going so fast it's now at a thousand but these are intensities the the tone is at 80 now it's at 85 now it's at 90 so there's a good response there you can see that muscle contracting and remember that's the stapedius muscle that's contracting and so here are the thresholds at 500, 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000. So that's ipsilateral. It's this side, the testier. Now it's going to go right into contralateral responses as soon as it finishes. So now it's gone to contra. Now, oops, bad idea. He's not hearing the beep because the clinician <laughs> forgot to put the probe, the tip in his ear. Bad. So that one really would be at, would be present, but I messed up. So he has to be able to hear the sound in the contralateral ear, and then it's measuring on this side. You good? Keep going until we finish the test, and then Perfect. we'll look at it if you're zoomed into the screen so they can see it. So you can see the the drop where the response is actually at, there's no response, then there's a response, and then they're looking for it to grow. Now they moved on to 4,000, I say they, the machine, <laughs> and it's, it's at 85, there's a good response there, so they're gonna take it at 85. So now we have all of our thresholds for ipsilateral and contralateral. So now I'm gonna save it, you always save before you go to the other ear. But I'm gonna click now back to the tympanometry I'm going to unplug Brandon so he can hear. So what, what type of tympanogram do I have? Type A. Type A. Good. It actually tells you, too. Another benefit of technology. Does it automatically pretty much. Um, what else do we need to look at? Remember, ear canal volume, ECV. His ear canal volume is 0.9. Very normal. You're normal. Oh, good. Yay. <laughs> so that's it. That's tympanometry. This is diagnostic tympanometry. You guys are going to practice doing diagnostic tympanometry um, and acoustic reflexes. And then you're going to also do the screenings on each other just to give you an idea of how different equipment operates. This is something only an audiologist would do, but the other two are something that as an SLP you would do.